Okay, welcome to another episode, guys. Today we'll be testing and replacing the EVAP canister purge volume control valve. I know that's a big mouthful, uh, but it's a component that lives in toward the rear of the engine bay on this vehicle. Uh, this happens to be a 1997 Nissan Maxima. And to really pinpoint why you're receiving code 1445, there are a couple of things that we need to check. Of course, we'll check the, uh, the control valve itself. We'll also make sure that power is getting to the valve. And also there's a pressure sensor that lives at the rear of the vehicle. And we need to check that as well. So that being said, let's go ahead and let's begin. Now trouble code 1445 is for this guy right here. This is the EVAP canister purge volume control valve. And what this valve does is it controls the flow rate of fuel vapor coming from the EVAP canister. And I know that sounds confusing. And later on in the video, I'll, uh, I'll show you what the EVAP canister is. But essentially in the back, in the rear of this vehicle, there's a canister that has charcoal that traps fuel vapor. And this valve controls that fuel vapor coming back uh, from the canister and puts the fuel vapor into the intake manifold and mixes it with air and it burns it off. The whole point of this whole system is to reduce hydrocarbons or in other words, to reduce emissions. So if you're receiving 1445, code 1445, there are a couple of things they need to check. First, we'll start with this guy. We'll check to see if power is getting uh, from the harness uh, to the sensor. In other words, we, we wanna make sure power is indeed getting to this guy right here. So let's start with that. So let's start by removing this harness here. Okay, now what we need to do is place the ignition key to the on position. You won't crank or start the car. Just turn the ignition key to the on position. Okay, to the on position here. Don't crank it again, just turn it on. And then you're going to need your trusty multimeter here. And of course you have different functions on this guy, but in this case we just need the volt setting. I'll place this right here so you guys can see it. And if you've never used one of these multimeters before, you have two leads. The black lead goes to ground, or you can place it on the negative terminal on the battery. Some people say you shouldn't do that, but if you're really worried about it, just place it to ground. Ground means uh, any good metal point on the vehicle. Then the positive, which is this guy, will be going to the harness. Now. The manual states that we should see battery voltage, so around 12 volts, by testing the second terminal and the fifth terminal. So we need to make sure power is getting to this harness. So we'll place the positive lead here on number two. And we have 12 volts worth of power, that's good. And again on number five, and we have 12 volts worth of power. So this just verifies that power is getting to this volume pump. Now, if you're not receiving a reading here, check the harness back here. Make sure that all the wires are in good shape. Uh, there's nothing frayed, cut, uh, melted, chewed on. Make sure they're all in good shape. If they are, then you can also check what the fuse is. Uh, in this case, this runs through a 7.5 amp fuse. And sometimes you may have a short between the sensor and the fuse itself. But usually, if you do have a problem, it's usually with the wires back here. Very, very rarely you could have a problem with the ECM as well. But really what I would suspect if, is if all these wires look good, make sure you have good ground. Because if you don't have a good ground here at the multimeter, you're not going to get a reading at all. And then once you finish with this test, just make sure you turn off the ignition key. Now if everything looks okay here, the next step is there's a pressure sensor, an EVAP pressure sensor that sits toward the rear of the vehicle underneath the car in fact. So let's go ahead and take a look at that sensor. All right, so now we're at the rear of the vehicle. This happens to be the EVAP canister, just to give you an idea where we are. This happens to be the rear uh, driver's side wheel. And if you keep on going a little further back, you'll find the canister. If you're receiving code 1445, there is something else that we need to check that could throw you this code. And if you look up, again, let me do that again, if you guys are doing this and you're trying to follow it, there's your canister and just look straight up. And really it should be, this should be bolted to the frame, but the, the bolt is sheared right off. This car is 17 years old, but right here you have a pressure sensor. 
and if this pressure sensor is not working correctly it could throw a code 1445 so off camera I'm going to remove this hose we're going to hook up a vacuum pump and apply vacuum and see if the voltage changes okay hopefully you guys can see this pretty well it's 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 pretty darn difficult to get everything lined up so you guys can see this on camera but once you remove that uh, the vacuum hose, you're going to keep the uh, the harness connector plugged in. You're not going to unplug it. And what I have here is just a paper clip, and I have a uh, a connector here with two alligator ends. Okay, it's all one wire here. So what I'm going to do is you have to leave it plugged in again. You can't unplug this harness connector. But in the back you have three leads. In this case we want the the second or uh, this yellow wire running into the uh, the connector. You have a rubber grommet back here. You need to clear that rubber grommet and make clear connection with the metal uh, tab. So just get yourself a paper clip and insert it. You'll feel the paper clip place around the rubber grommet and make contact with the uh, with the metal lead inside the harness here and then what I'm going to do is just take one end of the alligator clip and just attach it to uh, maybe we'll put it here like so now for the negative terminal here running from the uh, from the multimeter you need a very good ground and as you can see everything here is completely rusted out but right here you have the emergency brake or the handbrake and then you have this spring right here let me just actually raise this up you see that metal spring right there? We're going to make contact right there for the negative, for this black wire coming from the multimeter. Whoop. And it just happens to make a very, very good connection. So just place it, just make sure you have a good contact with this metal piece right here, with this metal coil. And then what I'm going to do is take the other side, or the other end of the alligator clip, and attach it to the positive lead coming from the multimeter and we should see some kind of reading here and we do we see 3.2 volts now as I apply a vacuum in other words let me see if I get this all on camera here for you guys as I apply vacuum that this voltage should go down okay you really don't need a lot at all in fact you want to keep it under negative 10 kilopascals that's this uh, red dial so very very small vacuum as you can see it's already going down very very small and we're going down so this works if we, we release the pressure which is this guy right here it should go back up and it does so this just verifies that this sensor is working correctly if you are not receiving these these uh, results again make sure you have a good connection to the harness and really just double check this because if if you don't have a good ground again if your ground isn't good if you don't have a good connection to the harness then you get, you'll you won't see anything on the multimeter and think the sensor is bad so just make sure you have a good connection and if you do you've checked everything then this sensor is bad and you need to replace it now once you guys wrap up that uh, that test concerning the pressure sensor Make sure you turn off the ignition key again, and the last step is testing the sensor itself here, or the valve itself here, the uh, volume control valve. Now this is attached to the top of the intake by a couple of 10 millimeter bolts. I'm going to remove those bolts. Uh, actually, they may be 12 millimeter. I'll check in a second. But I'm going to remove those bolts and so I can lift up the volume control valve and give you better uh, a clearer view of this harness back here. What we need to do is an ohms test to see if this uh, control valve is working correctly. And this is a 12 millimeter. So you have two 12 millimeter bolts back here. And I'm also going to remove two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here, another guy right there. Okay, so our valve is free and clear. I have our multimeter placed to the ohm setting. So again, make sure in this case it's not volts, uh, but it's on the ohm setting. And let me just give you a close-up before I perform this test because I don't think you'll be able to see what I'm doing when I actually uh, show it in a couple moments. 
but what you want to do is an ohms test or an ohms reading on different terminals. Now this happens to be the top right is terminal 1, terminal 2, terminal 3 is the top left, okay? So 1, 2, 3 is the top, the bottom is 4, 5, and 6, okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So your first test, you want to check the ohms with one terminal on number 2, the other one on number 1, and then the second test on... Uh, a terminal on number two and the other on terminal three and you should have approximately 30 ohms now if you do on the second test you'll place one uh, one lead on terminal five here the other one on terminal four and then the second test you'll do terminal one lead and the other lead on terminal six so again first you'll essentially do four tests the first will be touching terminal 2 and 1, then terminal 2 and 3, then terminal 5 and 4, and then terminal 5 and 6, okay? And you want to see about 30 ohms on these, uh, on these tests. So let's see what we come up with. Okay, so I'm going to start with terminals 2, that's the top middle, and terminal 1, that's the top right, okay? And as you can see, we're getting 29 ohms, 28, so we're, this is in good shape. Now I'm going to test terminals 2, that's the top middle, and terminal 3, that's the top left. And let's see what we come up with. And again, 29 ohms, so 28, so that's okay. Now the third test will do terminal 5, that's the bottom uh, middle, and terminal 4, that's the bottom on the right. And we're in good shape there. And then for the last test. And we're okay. Okay, so this just verifies that this sensor or this valve is in good shape. And then there's just one more thing that we can do before we uh, wrap this up. And one last thing I just want to note here. Again, I bolted everything back down to the plenum. And of course my harness connector is... Uh, is back on here but one last test you can do and really if you can get a mate uh, to help you do this but what you want to do is make sure you remove the two bolts here uh, the two 12 millimeter bolts back here from the top of the plenum and you're going to disconnect this vacuum hose and this vacuum hose and plug the ends as well so in other words when you remove the hoses plug the ends with tape whatever you want to use just make sure you plug the ends then have your friend turn on the ignition key and turn off. Turn on the ignition key, turn off. Again, make sure the harness is connected here. And as your friend turns on and turns off the ignition, again, you're not cranking the car, you're just turning the ignition key on and off. You're going to look through this opening right here. And you should see the valve move back and forth and correspond with the ignition going on and off. And again, once you perform all of these tests, you can really pinpoint where the problem is correct the affected unit and you'll be back up and running.